So here we go, we've got a pentagonal prism. We're going to draw this thing. I'm going to extend my pair of compasses to the length of the side, which they said was 24 millimeters. And I'm going to draw that little construction line circle there from that side, construction line circle from this side, and a construction line circle down at the bottom over here at that intersection. I can draw a perpendicular bisector over here. Perpendicular bisector coming up here. There we go. I can now say, all right, um, I can take my lines going from that intersection of the circles through the, where the bisector cuts the arc over there, going up to that point over there, goes from that intersection up through that arc where the perpendicular bisector is, touches that circle. I get that 72 degree angle over here for my pentagon. I get that 72 degree angle over here for the pentagonal side. And now I can take that same 24 millimeters over there, go up over here, mark that off, and I have a nicely constructed pentagon. There we go. That is my pentagon done. Once I've done that, I need to draw in my XY axis about 10 millimeters away. There we go. Remember to mark it as X and Y. And I'm going to take lines going up from here in order to get all of these points over here. And we are going to draw in the front view of my pentagonal prism. Uh, the question says that the XY axis is right on the base. Okay, I'm going to just darken in that base over there. Uh, it tells me that the height of this uh, pentagonal prism is 56. So I measure off 56 with my pair of dividers. Mark that off. And I can draw in the top of it over here. I'm going to draw in these lines. That one, I can definitely draw in dark. That one, I can definitely draw in dark because they're on the outside. I'm standing over here, so I'll be able to see this point. I'll be able to see that point. Therefore, those two are going to be dark lines. That and that are dark. This line, if I'm standing over here, is at the back, so that will be a hidden detail line at the back. Right, I'm going to number this thing. I'm going to start over here at that point A. I'm going to call that point 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Those numbers that I've just done, I'm going to take them up to the top over here. I've got number 1 over here, number 2, number 3, number 4, and number 5 at the top there. 5 goes down to a 6 at the bottom. So underneath 5 over here, I've got 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Right, let's have a look at that. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. There we go. Right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at the top. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 at the bottom. Right, I need to draw in my XY axis over here for my left view. Let's just put a little X over here. Let's call that X2 and Y2. I'm going to put in an XY axis over here. X1, Y1 over there. Right, neatly, not like me. Right, take that across. Construction lines coming across from that base onto my left and right view. And now I'm going to transfer those points. Right, let's two, do number one. Number one is that far away from the XY axis over here. I find number one over here. I come across to my new XY axis. I mark it off and I label that as number one. I go along here. I say number two is the same distance as number one. If I come over here, there's number two, take it across, and I have number one and number two in exactly the same place over here. One and two. I'm going to have that same distance on my left view. There's number one and number two on that point over there. Let's take a look at number five and number three. Number five and number three. There I go. There's the distance from number five. There's the distance from number three. There's number five. Come across over here. Mark it off. Label it as number five. Take it across here. There's number 
five over here. But I said that number five and number three, they were the same distance. So I've got number three over there as well and number three over there. Number four is this distance over here. Take it across. There's number four over there. Four on that view and four on that view over there. Right. Um, I can transfer the points number six. Let's have a look. Number six. Find number six. Go along here. Place it down here. Mark it off. And I will have a point number six. And if I'm concentrating, I'll see that number six and number five. Can you see? It's directly below number five. So all of these numbers over here, I can literally just drop lines coming straight down from these points over here. I can draw that in dark. I can draw that in dark. And I can draw that in dark. I can draw a line coming across over here. I can draw a line coming down over here. I can draw a line coming down over here. And I can draw a line coming down over here. Draw a line coming across over here. Draw a line coming across over here. Now, what would happen is that uh, your marker is not going to give you full marks. Reason being is that you haven't got all the numbers over here. I want to see what the numbers are. What is directly below number four? 10. So I come across here. There's four at the top, 10 at the bottom. What is directly below one? Uh, one? I've got a seven. Look at it. There's number one. There's number seven. So that must be a seven. What is directly below number two? There's number two. There's number eight. There's number two. There's number eight. So directly below number two over here, I must have a number eight. If I come across here, uh, directly below number three, I have a nine. There's number three. There's number nine. I must have a nine. Directly below number four, we said it was a ten. Come across here. There's four. There's 10. 6 and 9. 6 and 9 on the, that point, directly below four, uh, 3 and 5. And 1 and 2, I'll have a 7 and an 8 below those things. Please have a look at the measurements over here. There's 5. If I come across here, I must be able to find 5. There's 6. If I come across here, there's 6. There's 6. 10. There's 10. There's 10. Seven. Let's take seven. There's seven. Take it across here. There's seven. There's seven. I hope you guys are happy with that. <laughs>